Oh, what a beautiful morning. Mick Gillespie, Chuck Walter with you. It's the Cubs baseball channel. We sing, we dance, and we break it down. It is that time of the year, September, and the Chicago Cubs are playing very meaningful baseball. They've also called up one of their top prospects from the Chris Bryant trade. We'll get into that, but the big story, the Cubs have a chance to bury the Cincinnati Reds this weekend in their own ballpark. This is the Cubs baseball channel. Be sure to join it. Just give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Cincinnati having a resurgent season. They were god awful last year. One of the worst teams in franchise history. But you remember it was a few months back right before the Ellie De La Cruz mania. They came into Wrigley Field and swept the Cubs in three games. Since then, it's been Chicago who's been the much better team. Let's start with the fact, though, that the Reds really bolstered their roster um, in the last couple of hours, really, in the last 24 hours. One, adding Jake Fraley to the mix, who's been hurt and has been a really good outfielder. Two, they hit the waiver wire. It was the two teams in Ohio that really dominated the waiver wire. The Guardians got everyone, it seemed like, and the Reds said, hey, we'll take everyone that isn't a pitcher. They add to the fold Hunter Renfro, who has 19 home runs on the season and 56 RBI. He's a nice little addition. The other one, Harrison Bader, a 643 OPS. He's depth at this point in the season. But the Reds look a little bit better than they did 24 hours ago. Cubs, though, Mick, have a chance to just destroy them taking three of four or potentially a four game sweep. There's a big debate going on right now around the game though, about the competitive balance and these teams that have released all of these players that aren't releasable players, really. I mean, by their performance, I mean, you wouldn't release Hunter Renfro if you were in a pennant race, but they don't want to pay the luxury tax. Um, Harrison Bader released, he's been injured, you know, a lot of the season, but the Yankees got rid of him. Renfro, one of the angels casual casualties and the way that we've, and we talked about it, the way it works is the lower record gets the players. So since the Reds are chasing the Cubs, they got the opportunity to sign these guys. What was left from the players that were signed by Cleveland, who got Giolito Lopez and uh, Matt Moore, who's a, such a good pitcher. And so they just changed their entire team without having to give up anything but money. Um, this is definitely not a good look for baseball right now. But for the Reds, this is a different type of team. And the Cubs going into the series, as you mentioned, with a chance to uh, put Cincinnati uh, in the rearview mirror if, if they're able to win this series. But I know we're going to be talking about this for a long time, you know, just how fair it is that you can go out there and add two veteran players without having to give up anything to do it except some cash. So uh, with that said, it is exciting, though, going into a day-night doubleheader against a team that you've pretty – much been even with four and five record. You, you mentioned that the, the Reds had the sweep earlier this year, but the Cubs are playing great baseball. Man, imagine being the Minnesota Twins at this point in the season where you've been the best team in the Central all year, and then the Guardians just add all these. I mean, Giolito is a pretty big time arm to be adding at this stage in the season. I mean, the the White Sox just received two top five prospects from the Angels for him, and the Guardians just pick them up last second as they enter September. It is a bunch of baloney. Uh, we can get into that another day, but we got to talk about this matchup coming up. Four games with the Reds. It's a doubleheader. Starts at 1210 at Great American Ballpark. Jordan Wicks had the historic start in game number one. Probably not going to be stretched into six, seven innings, but was brilliant in game one. Good enough to have a 1-8-0 ERA and pick up a win in his first start up against Graham Ashcraft. Seven and eight, a four, seven, three. But that is a very deceiving stat line. Ashcraft has been quality in 10 of his last 11 starts. I got the splits up here, Mick. In April and March was great. Five starts had a 2-1-0 ERA. In May and June had a 9-2-1 and a 10-3-8 ERA in 10 starts. Atrocious middle of the summer, but he's picked it back up. So this is someone that can go seven innings of two-run baseball every time out there. Well, we've seen a lot of great pitching lately. You know, they just got finished with that Brewer series and and every night was, um, you know, good pitching. And so the Cubs are going to have their work cut out for them again in game one of the doubleheader. And we'll see what Jordan Wicks is made of. First time going on the road. He had the great performance against the Pirates. 
Um, and uh, excuse me, first time going to Cincinnati, had the great performance against the Pirates on the road, and now he's in Cincinnati. So it'll be exciting. And then the other big news today is that one of his teammates from Iowa will be joining him. Well, really two of them, but the one that we're going to talk about right now is Alexander Canario. And I know a lot of you guys that are on here saw the video today. But it wasn't Hollywood Pete. You know, I figured it would be Pete Crow Armstrong that would get the call up. But he scuffled a little bit here in the last week or so. He's been it's been tough for him. And Canario has been dynamite. You know, he's coming back from the ankle and the shoulder injury that he suffered in the Dominican. And he's just hit his stride. And, and he's a guy that the Cubs traded Chris Bryant to get. He was someone that people in the Giants organization weren't real happy that they traded. And uh, he was the Cubs' most powerful prospect last year. He had 37 home runs. And so he's going to join the big league club. So that's uh, kind of a surprising move. But I guess when you really think about it, it shouldn't be because he earned it. And I feel like center field, I, I thought that Pete Crow Armstrong would be a great fit because he's an excellent, uh, he's real a gold glove winning center fielder. But Canary is good too. So I guess that's part of it. Plus you get the power. Um, you know, I think they want to season Pete Crow Armstrong a little bit more, but I would not be surprised if eventually he doesn't end up there too. I think the Cubs are looking at what options they have in front of them and that for this doubleheader and right now, they feel like Canario would be the guy, see what he can do. Maybe, you know, he runs into a couple here and helps them with some some punch in this Cincinnati series. But I, I really don't feel like this is set for the entire time. I think this goes day to day. They want to see what they got. And I, I still feel like Pete Crow Armstrong's like that, you know, that, that, that little fire plug on the wall that you pull in, in emergency situations because I know he's going to be a spark when he gets there. But Canario's, he's good too. A different good power hitting guy. He's going to strike out somebody. He's going to drive in runs. The game one we mentioned is at 1210. It's Jordan Wicks and Graham Ashcraft. Game two is 540 Central Time at Great American Ballpark, and it features the veteran right-handed pitcher Shane Green for the Chicago Cubs. What do you know about Shane Green? He goes up against uh, Ben Lively for the Reds, who's been whatever. Right. Well, look, drink. This is one of those situations where the Cubs just don't have a lot of options. This is where the, the development has been weak as far as developing starting pitching and having a lot of starting pitching depth. So instead of being able to bring up someone that they have put in position, which could be Chris Clark, maybe, who doesn't have any experience, or... Ben Brown, who's been on the IL and 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 trying to get back, they're going to go with Shane Green, and and Shane Green is a veteran. You you guys probably remember him at some point. He was the closer for the Tigers, pitched for the Dodgers and the Braves, nine big league seasons, most most of them, with uh, the Tigers. So he's going to get the opportunity. We'll see what happens. I mean, the the thing that you don't want in a situation like this is to get someone that hasn't had the experience that is unproven and then goes in there and gets blown out. So I think that when they looked at the options that they had, that they figured, you know what, this would probably be the safest of the options. Just keep them in the game, give you some innings, and then maybe turn it over to the bullpen. So it's uh, Shane Green, Ben Lively, and the nightcap of the doubleheader. Kind of a weird matchup. Chris, uh, the Cincinnati Reds have been a strange story this year. Beginning of the season, I'm talking May, lowest attendances in ballpark history. No one cared. The owner had just said, where else are you going to go? Everyone was pissed off. The future looked bright, but the casual fans weren't really looking at AAA Louisville and what they were doing. They'd heard the name Ellie De La Cruz. They hadn't seen him get brought up. So McLean gets brought up. De La Cruz gets brought up. Um, Hunter Green starts picking up form at one point in the season, and everything was rolling for Cincinnati. Jonathan India got hurt. And since Jonathan India got hurt, this has not been the same Cincinnati Reds team. They're still in the mix at least for the uh, wild card mainly. I think it's safe to say that unless they had a big-time series against the Cubs, they're most likely out of it six games back. But they, at this point, with this series, can kind of control their own destiny to get back into the mix because they do have four against the Cubs. You win three, you win four, and it's a completely different story moving forward. This is, and we're going to say this 
every series for the rest of the year because there's seven against the Diamondbacks coming up and three against the Giants. And there's chances to really just control the narrative here. But this one right now for the Cubs and for the Reds, it is make or break for the Reds and it is burial time for the Cubs. That, yeah, that's just flat out what it is. They can right. end the Reds' chances of a wild card with a four-game sweep here, but you got to start with a two-game sweep on Friday. Yeah, and it, and it's like it's the same thing against the Reds as it was Milwaukee. Maybe not quite uh, as distinct, but it starts with pitching, and it, and it it always starts with starting pitching, and I mean that in a very you know pun type of way. I mean you got to go out there and give your team a chance, and when the Cubs' starting pitching has given them a ta- a chance, uh, they figured out a way to win the game. Bellinger's come up with big hits. Dansby. Uh, Ian Happ starting to find it. Uh, Say Suzuki's been good. Just seems like they find a way when the starting pitching gives them a chance. So uh, these are going to be tough games in Cincinnati, but it comes down to starting pitching. So we'll see what happens. And if if you looked uh, a, a week ago before we saw Jordan Wicks and said, okay, we got Jordan Wicks in game one and then Shane Green in game two, you'd put L's next to those. Now we saw what Jordan Wicks can do, and you're going, okay, we know what, we got a chance here, and then, you know, who knows what's going to happen in game two. But these are, all these games are important. The Cubs have been playing games that have been meaningful since the, well, since the, really since the uh, trade deadline. They've done really well in those games, but they're going to have to, as you mentioned, keep it going. So today's doubleheader, really important to the success that the Cubs are having. It, It was Fun beating the Brewers two out of three, but now it's time to turn the page and get things geared up for Cincinnati in this four-game weekend. It starts in just a few hours, high noon at Great American Ballpark, or just a few minutes afternoon with uh, Jordan Wicks taking the hill for the Cubbies as they have four against the Cincinnati Reds, and then they'll worry about the West. But for now, it's another central matchup. They took care of business against the Brewers. This was a huge stretch. And it remains a huge stretch with the red legs at Great American Ballpark. Only one look from you today, Mick. That's good stuff. The drinking game. No one is intoxicated before noon for first pitch. That's what Mick. It's early in the morning, big guy. Lights aren't even on there yet. This is how you do. Look, this is how you do a double header. You start early. No doubt about it. For Mick Gillespie, (laughs) Chuck Walter, be sure to join the channel. We're giving you content every day that ends with a Y. When we said that a month or two ago, Mick, I was kind of being facetious. We've held our end of the bargain. So for that, as a thanks, give us the thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It's free. 